How's it going, party people? Greg Jenkins here from MonkeyPod Marketing. And if you are an Infusionsoft or a Keep user, then you are in the right place. Um, you probably already know just how powerful the campaign builder can be, but one of the keys to its power is effectively using decision diamonds. Um, they have been a source of frustration and sometimes confusion uh, in the ecosystem for years. And in this video, I want to answer some of the most common questions about decision diamonds to make sure that you've got a rock solid understanding of what they are, where they fit, and how you can use them to level up your campaigns. Okay, so question number one here is what are decision diamonds? And quite simply, they are a, um, a tool within the campaign builder to decide when people take which path. So if your campaign is linear and there's only one path, then you don't have a need for a decision diamond. Um, the automation works pretty simply. If this happens, then this happens. And then if this happens, then this happens. And that's totally fine. Um, but without fail, there will be times in our businesses and in our automation where we want different outcomes to happen based on different information. And the decision diamond is how we determine when people take path one and when people take path two. It's like an air traffic controller or, or my favorite analogy is like the ticket taker at a movie theater. The contact shows up. The decision diamond rips their ticket and says, hey, it's, it's down this way past the bathrooms, theater 12 on your left or it's down this way past the popcorn stand, uh, theater you know, six on your right. So the decision diamond is, is that um, juncture where the contact is routed into one of those paths. Which brings us to question number two, which is why are decision diamonds valuable? And the, the simplest answer I can give here is because of the power of segmentation, right? Um, automation is uh, an invaluable tool for any business, but its biggest drawback has been that automation can feel robotic. It can feel uh, generic. And the more robotic or the more generic it is, the less effective it can be. So decision diamonds allow us to branch people into different pathways, which creates a more personalized experience. Um, if you have been in the small business game or the marketing game for any amount of time, then you know the power of segmentation. Um, it allows us to speak to people on a really personal level, which just means our marketing will be that much more effective. The customer experience we are creating can be tailored to that individual, and decision diamonds are largely how that is accomplished in the campaign builder. Okay, that brings us to question number three here, which is what criteria can we use? So when it comes to the logic that your decision diamond can use, it's not arbitrary. It is, it is using rules that we, the architect of this automation, have configured. Um, and there's different types of information that is available to us when we are building this rules, but largely it is contact information. Um, and that is broken up into two different categories. So the contact field data, things like their city, their state, um, or whether or not they have a phone number on file, um, or any value in your custom fields, right? Things that, that are stored in the different fields on the contact record, or the other half of contact data is tags. And I emphasize and, and, and underscore tags here because they are just an infinitely powerful and flexible tool in uh, specifically Infusionsoft and Keep, but in general, right? Tags uh, represent uh, information that we have collected about the contact, either a selection they have made or a link that they have clicked or a purchase that they have made, right? And because there are so many flexible ways to apply or remove tags, um, you can effectively be applying and removing tags um, in an automated fashion, knowing that it will inform the paths that contacts are taking. So if you understand um, the, the power and flexibility behind tags, it means that our rules can be that much more specific as well. Now, um, outside of the contact data, um, you can also use form data, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly add an asterisk to this one um, because form data, uh, what I'm talking about here are like radio options and check boxes, um, but form data is, it's only available if the decision diamond happens immediately following an Infusionsoft web form or an Infusionsoft legacy landing page. 
So if you're using the newer Infusionsoft landing page builder, and that's the one that most people use, the form data is not passed to the decision diamond, which is, is it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. The workaround is to apply a tag to any of your virtual fields, any of your radio selections, any of your checkboxes, and then the tag data you can use as normal in terms of building out your rules. So that is the workaround if you're using the new landing page builder. But just be aware if your decision diamond comes after a web form, um, you will have the option of using the form data in terms of building your rules there. Uh, this brings us to the next question, which is what limitations are there for building our decision diamonds? Um, and one of them I just mentioned, which is the form data is only accessible immediately after the form. Um, so where your decision diamond takes place does make a difference. But another limitation here is that because there's such a heavy emphasis on the contact data, we don't really get access to some of the other types of records throughout Infusionsoft or throughout Keep. So order records, opportunity records, referral partner records, um, are not accessible in terms of building our rules. Uh, and that's hopefully something that they can address as they um, you know, release updates and, and introduce more flexibility to Decision Diamonds over time. But in the meantime, the workaround is to, uh, when somebody makes a purchase, apply a tag. Or when somebody, when an opportunity moves to a specific stage, apply a tag, and then use those tags when configuring your rules because you can't reference those other record types directly. So the final thing I'll say about limitations is it's less, I guess it's less of a limitation and more of just a nuance in terms of how decision diamonds work. Um, decision diamonds can only use the contact information that is available at the time that that contact hits that part of the campaign. So what I mean is if a contact is working through your campaign and then they hit a decision diamond, they're going to be assessed based on the information available at that time. And they'll be you know, routed into one of the various outcomes. But if their information changes, right? If they you know, get a tag or a field is updated after they've already passed through that decision diamond, they aren't going to automatically be reprocessed, right? It's not going to update their, their status in the campaign because they've already moved past that decision diamond. The decision is made at a point in time using the information that we have available at that point in time. And this isn't, it's not really a drawback. It's just an important consideration because if you know that their information might change over time, then you might want to structure your automation so that um, if it changes, they're pulled out of that line of logic. Or if it changes, they're you know added back to before the decision diamond so that they can be processed again and rerouted accordingly. So it's just good to know so that you can account for it as you are building out your automation. All right, question number five here, which is how do I add a decision diamond to my campaigns? Uh, this is one that pops up periodically because as people start to understand the value of decision diamonds, they're going to naturally reach for them to want to add them to their campaigns to introduce you know, more detailed segmentation or, or more flexible automation. Um, and decision diamonds are the one feature in campaigns that don't live on any of the menus. So you can't drag it out onto the canvas. You can't connect it automatically. Um, decision diamonds show up when the campaign builder determines it needs more information. So if you have a goal leading into multiple sequences, a decision diamond will appear the moment you connect that goal to more than one sequence. Or if you have a sequence that leads into more than one sequence, uh, the decision diamond shows up once you make that second connection um, because it determines, hey, there's more than one pathway. If there's one item leading to one other item, then there's no need for a decision diamond because the pathway is linear. But as soon as you introduce that branch, the campaign builder automatically adds that decision diamond, giving us the opportunity to tell it when we want people to go where. Which brings us to question number six. How do I set up the rules inside my decision diamond? Um, so like any element on the Campaign Builder Canvas, if you double click on the Decision Diamond, you are taken into an interface that allows us to set up the rules um, for each of your various outcomes, for each of your various sequences. Um, and it's sort of like a Mad Libs style uh, sentence builder where you say, if the um, contacts, custom fields, phone number has a value, send them here. And if the contacts, custom field, phone number doesn't have a value, send them there. Um, or if the contacts tags contains 
blog subscriber, send them here. And if it doesn't contain blog subscriber, send them somewhere else, right? And the rules are pretty straightforward if you're doing some simple segmentation, like two things that are opposites, if they do have this or if they don't have that. Um, but they get increasingly complex when you introduce multi-part statements, right? I mean, I will point out that the rules uh, use what is known as Boolean logic, which doesn't mean a whole lot to me, um, but I'm told for people who have a background in engineering or mathematics or who have just a deeper understanding of Boolean logic that that can be useful as far as um, you know, seeing how it's broken down, seeing how the logic actually works. But my best practice is to keep my rules as simple as possible whenever I can and to use the test feature exhaustively, right? I describe Decision Diamonds as my Achilles heel, just because I, I think I, I like to think I know the campaign builder pretty well, but more than once I have gotten my logic statements wrong. So no matter how confident I feel, I am always testing it, always making sure that I test each of the permutations to make sure people are going where I think they need to go. Um, and then one one feature I'll point out is that you can copy rules. So if you have you know six different sequences and the rules are really similar, sometimes copying rules from one sequence to the other and then making small adjustments can prevent or reduce the the, the human error in this situation. And finally, you do get to establish a safety net. So if somebody doesn't meet the criteria for any of the rules, um, the default is that they will drop out of the campaign at that point. But if that is not what you want, you can, at the very bottom, you can select what you want to have happen as a default outcome if they don't meet the criteria for any of the rules. So you can say, you know, I've got rules for sequence one, two, and three, and then if they don't meet any of those rules, put them in sequence three anyway, right? So my advice for you as you're building your rules is to be patient with yourself, um, to practice and to test frequently to make sure you've accounted for all of the different situations. Now. Question number seven, the final question for this video is, um, can liquid content or can Infusionsoft's dynamic content feature replace the need for decision diamonds? I mean, if you're not familiar with dynamic content, uh, I've got some documentation, some, some resources that will help explain what that feature does. Uh, but effectively, what it allows you to do is send one email to your audience, but have different sections of that content hidden or revealed based on what you know about them. So that allows you to be super specific and targeted within your communication so that call to actions are hidden from people who have already taken that action. You can send out a promo for three different products, but people will only see the link to buy for the one or the description or the offer for the ones that they haven't taken, right? This prevents the, the, the scenario we've all seen where an offer goes out to somebody who has already taken advantage of it and then you have to deal with the awkward conversation of why the price has changed or something like that. Um, and the answer to this question is that liquid content, dynamic content, it's super powerful and it does reduce the need for decision diamonds but it doesn't completely replace it because liquid content is only um, enacted when, once the email is sent, okay? So that email is going out. Liquid content controls how it looks or which sections are, are included, um, whereas the decision diamond branches people into different experiences. So if you want that email skipped entirely, the decision diamond can do that, right? Or if you wanna send you know, three emails to people who are brand new customers and only one to people who have bought before, well, liquid content wouldn't change that experience. It would only change the content within those emails. The decision diamond can route them into separate experiences entirely. So um, I, I, I do think dynamic content is powerful. I don't think it's a direct replacement for decision diamonds, uh, maybe in, you know, a few use cases, uh, but overall, I use decision diamonds when I need people to have completely different experiences, like um, a different number of touch points or a, a different pace to the number of emails they're receiving, that type of thing. So um, that is it for the, the seven questions I wanted to cover here on decision diamonds. They are a powerful part of the, of the most powerful feature in both Keep and Infusionsoft, which is the Campaign Builder. If you would like more resources on the Campaign Builder, I've got a Campaign Builder 101 blog post. And if you want a deep dive, exhaustive A to Z approach for, for, for understanding that tool, I recommend the CB Trilogy course. Go to cbtrilogy.com to start a free trial or sign up today. If you have any questions about this, if you found it valuable, or if you 
Um, if you think I missed anything or have your own take on Decision Diamonds, let me know in the comments below. Take care.